So I'm joined by Bloodstock reporter Tom Pennington to help us search out some more clues for Cheltenham, this time from a breeding perspective. Uh, so Tom, you're going to be looking at three races today, and that is the Supreme, Neptune and Triumph. Yeah. Why have you chosen those three races? Um, I've chosen those because generally the horses are a little bit younger. Um, they haven't got as much form behind them, so from a pedigree point of view it's easier to make a judgement on pedigree rather than on the form, so that's why I've chosen those three races. So what are your pedigree picks for the Supreme? Um, I know it's a little bit obvious, he's quite short by his favourite. My tent or yours I think stands out on pedigree and form. Um, he's a flatbred, they don't have the strongest record in the race, but his sire Desert Prince, is responsible. he's had a Cheltenham winner, um, Dabaroon, and he's out of half-sister to the Jewel Breeders' Cup turf winner Conduit, who appreciated quicker ground. Um, most of the horses in the family like quick ground, so I think if the ground comes up quick, which it normally is at Cheltenham, he'll improve again, and I, and I think he'll probably win because of that. My tent or yours, White Cap is shaken up. Tack and Desoy on the far side, not going down without a fight. My tent or yours, Tack and Desoy over on the far rail. My tent or yours, having to dig in, does lead from Tack and Desoy. My tent or yours, getting on top on the run to the line. Blood and you've got another fancy in that race. Yeah, as well. at a bigger price, I like Dodging Bullets, who was actually bred by Frankie Dettori. Um, Again, he's a flatbred horse, he's by Dubawi, he's related to a number of good flat horses. Um, the Oaks winner, Light Shift, is in there, but there are a number of good hurdlers, including the Grade 3 winner, Copeland, so he's a very good each way bet, I think, at 10 to 1. So that's my 10 toils and dodging bullets for the Supreme. And uh, your selections for the Triumph? Um, in the Triumph, Far West has looked impressive all year. He's by one of France's leading dual purpose sires, Polyglot. Um, who sired last year's art winner, um, Salemia. But he's also had a couple of Cheltenham winners, but there's Cabin is one of them, and um, Spirit River. My only concern would be the majority of the sires runners like given, given the ground. So if it comes up quick, he might be outpaced. I think all his forms on soft ground as well. That'd be my only concern, but the, the sire's got a very good festival record. And then what about Dia Carly? Because he's bred by the Aga Khan and he's got a good record. Yeah, I was a little bit disappointed last time out in Ireland with Willie Mullins. Um, Aga Khan breads have got a decent record at the festival. Murad has run well there. He's an Aga Khan bred horse. And most of them are with Willie Mullins as well, who has a good record with them. But I'd look, I would, wouldn't be looking at him really at this point. The final flight, an hour corner over from Dia Kali. They're clear of Ruakana and Blood Cotteel. And on the run up towards the finish, it's our corner who's going to extend his winning run over hurdles and wins in great style for Brian Cooper and Desi Hughes. Our Connor beats Dia Kali. I like, at a longer price, I like Kid Justice, who is unbeaten, very good horse. He's got the profile of a Triumph winner, um, very well-bred, like Zarkander, who won it, Celestial Halo, very good horses. And he's from the first crop of an exciting young sire, Lawman. Um, and he's got a lot of good juveniles in the pedigree, like last year, Kings Barnes is in there, Maureen. But you can see why he's taken to jumps, because further back in the family, champion hurdle winner, all the Brooks in there. So it's, it's a very strong family. And at 25 to 1, he looks good value. So far west and hidden justice in the triumph hurdle. And finally, the Neptune. And I know you're pretty keen on the new one, who's by King's Theatre. Yeah, King's Theatre, who died a couple of years ago. Mm. Um, He's got a very good re festival record. He's had eight winners, uh, including last year's um, Ryan Air Chase here at Riverside Theatre. Um, and quite interestingly, five of his, those eight winners have come when the ground's been good or quicker. So better ground, I think, will the new one will improve again. He was obviously unlucky at Cheltenham last time. But he's, he's got a good chance, I think, to beat uh, Pont Alexander. By 20 lengths, Roger Beantown has run a perfectly good race in second, but a tremendous win for the new one. It's a very, very smart one in second spot. another fancy in that Yeah, as well. John Ferguson's bidding to break his festival duck, and he's got Whispering Gallery in there at 25 to 1. He has got other entries in the World Turtle. I don't think he'll take that one up. Um, he's very well bred. He's by Delami, who's had two festival winners, Pigeon Island and Zaynar, who are very good horses. And he's from one of the hottest families around at the moment. His dam, who was a dual group two winner, is a half-sister to Nathaniel. And Great Heavens, who obviously fantastic horses um, for John Gosden last season. So it's a very strong pedigree. And at 25 to 1, again, I think he's overpriced. Whispering Gallery and Wake Your Dreams. Not much between the pair as they come to take the final flight. They have it between them. Whispering Gallery jumped on at the last, went on from Wake Your Dreams. Good to know, left behind in third, then Lee Raw. But this is another one for John Ferguson and Dennis O'Regan as the smart... Flat performer, Whispering Gallery, makes a smooth transition to her. 
So that is the new one on Whispering Gallery in the Neptune. Thank you for that, Tom, and all the best Thank with you your much. selections Thank at Cheltenham. You. And here is a recap of Tom's selections up on the screen now. Thanks for watching.